Now it is. <laughs> Should I start over? <laughs> yeah. You folks at home, I hope I was loud enough for you. Okay. Well, nowadays, nowadays we say that children are their parents' greatest treasure and responsibility. But Luther words it differently. He takes a different direction. He says, parents are children's most precious uh, treasure on earth. And that with their words, children are to behave and speak respectfully and not criticize them. Instead, children are to honor parents by serving them, helping them, caring for them, uh, for us now, when they are old, sick, feeble, or poor. And children are to do this cheerfully with humility and reference, reference to the best of their ability. Those are pretty strong words in support of mom and dad. And I figure I can give you a copy of this to take home <laughs> for when your kids act up and talk back, right? Imagine this. Parents, just one notch below God. I had hoped that would have been pastors, but... Ah, uh, Luther says, if practiced, all would be well. Parents would have more happiness, love and kindness and harmony in their houses, and children would win their parents' hearts completely. And then he tells us why parenting is so important and what responsibility we hold for our children. Luther, it is necessary to devote serious attention to the young, for if we want capable and qualified people for both the civil and spiritual areas of life, we really must spare no effort, time, or expense in teaching our children to serve God and the world. We must not think only of amassing money and property for them. God has given us children and entrusted them to us precisely so that we may raise and govern them, to bring up children in the respect and knowledge of God, and then, if so gifted, to have them engage in school so that they can be of service wherever they are needed. You might already know this, but Luther and Melanchthon are credited with starting public school system, and they started it 500 years ago for both boys and girls. It was revolutionary. But then Luther says this, and remember, this is 500 years ago. No one in the world believes any of this. The way things are going now in the world, everyone complains. Both young and old are altogether wild and unruly. They have no sense of honor or modesty. They do nothing unless forced. They defame and disparage one another behind their back in any way they can. Parents, as a rule, can't do much. After all, one fool raises another, and as they live, so live their children after them. Has nothing changed in 500 years? Right? Instruction number three, the Sabbath day of rest. This one is pretty simple and clear. The Hebrew word Sabbath means to rest, to stop working, to take a holiday. God has set aside each day, appoint, such a day, appointed it for rest, and said it is to be kept holy above all other days. My favorite picture of any part of my ministry is at Creator Lutheran, when I use this for a children's lesson, and the picture is of me and about 14 little kids laying on our back with our feet up around the kneelers uh, for the communion altar with a sucker in our mouth. And we talked about what it means to rest and to enjoy the day. Luther again. We observe holy days because our bodies need them. Nature teaches that common working people need to retire for a day of rest and be refreshed. And we observe them so that people have time and opportunity on such days of rest to attend worship services so that they may assemble to hear and discuss God's word and then offer their prayer, their praise, and their song to God. Because we all do not have time and leisure, we must set aside several hours per week for the young 
or at least a day for the whole community when we can concentrate on these matters. Actually, he says, no, one day is better than the other, and worship ought to take place daily, but because this is more than common people can do, at least one day a week should be set apart. Well, we know this about our world. In our world, our time, our Western nation, plenty of folks keep a day or two for rest and relaxation, but fewer and fewer keep any day holy. But that news really isn't new news either. Listen to Luther again. This commandment is broken not only by those who grossly misuse the holy day by neglecting to hear God's word or lying around taverns dead drunk like swine. None of you do that. It's broken when people listen to God's word as they would any other entertainment or only from force of habit go to hear the sermon and then leave with as little knowledge at the end as at the beginning. When we listen without serious attention. He says, some, having heard a sermon or two, become sick and tired of it and feel like they know all they need to know and need no more instructors. But when we seriously ponder God's word, hear it and put it to use, such is its power that it never departs without fruit. It always awakens new understanding and devotion and creates clean hearts and minds for God's word is not dead or idle, but living and effective. So mom and dads, love each other and see you all in church on Sunday. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>